Greek fire, essentially a primitive form of napalm, originated in Greece, but was used to great effect in naval battles during the Byzantine Empire. This was because it could not only float on top of the water, but was also difficult to extinguish by using water. The secrets of manufacture and deployment were so closely guarded that even today, we are unsure how it functioned. While the formula has been the predominant area of study, it is thought that the storage and pressurized delivery system played a huge role in its ignition and functionality. Flexible glass. There is very little that can be verified about the flexible glass or vitrium flexile allegedly created during Tiberius Caesar's reign of the Roman Empire. However, there are very interesting historical anecdotes that may lend credibility to this tale. These stories depict a glassmaker who presented a glass vessel, what this vessel is varies in the stories, to the emperor who inspected it. He returned it to the glassmaker who promptly threw it down on the ground. The glassmaker calmly picked it up and shows the emperor a dent in the glass rather than broken pieces. The glassmaker then proceeded to hammer it back to its original shape, and it appears as though no damage occurred to his work. Now you would think this creation would be rewarded. However, fearing that this new material would devalue gold, silver, and other precious metals, the emperor ensured no one else knew the formula for vitrium flexile, and then dispatched with the poor glassmaker's head. While seemingly impossible, it appears there may be some plausibility to this story. According to speculations, if the Roman glassmaker had somehow obtained boric acid or borax, both of which are naturally occurring materials, the ending product would be relatively unbreakable. Damascus steel. This term is used nowadays for a wide variety of pattern welded forged steel products. However, historically speaking, Damascus steel was discovered long ago and was used to make swords in the Middle East. Stories allege that these swords could cut through rocks or could even completely shear another blade. But what made this steel so special? The exact process they used is still unclear. The exceptionally strong fictional Valyrian steel, mentioned in George R. R. Martin's book series A Song of Ice and Fire, as well as its television adaptation Game of Thrones, have been inspired by Damascus steel, but with a magic twist. While not truly lost, the Apollo and Gemini space programs leave many modern scientists scratching their heads. Few schematics or records were kept of the original programs due to the increasing pressure of the space race. And as a result, almost every program was rushed to completion and included private contractors who took any records that did have with them on completion. While this wasn't a problem for several years, researchers with little else to go on have started to reverse engineer older components to determine how they worked as well as they did. Silphium. This lost genus of the fennel plant was used in Roman times as a form of birth control, as well as a cure all for common ailments. This plant grew only along what is now the coast of modern-day Libya. It very quickly became one of the most valuable materials in the ancient world, and was not only widely used, but was also displayed on several variations of their currency. It is speculated that with this plant only growing in a small portion of the world, and the increasing demand, it was likely over-harvested and driven to extinction. Stradivari Violins These violins and other stringed instruments created by the Stradivari family were prized in their day, circa 1650 to 1750, but are renowned in the modern day as having an unparalleled sound quality that is impossible to recreate. Most of these surviving instruments are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, but experts still disagree what makes them sound so beautiful. It is speculated that a fungus that grew in the region, or perhaps the density of the wood accounts for their beauty, but no one can say for sure. The family secret was lost with them after they passed away. Nepenthe. The Greeks were much more advanced than other civilizations of their time. One area they were highly regarded in was the field of medicine. They were said to treat those in mourning with Nepenthe, an antidepressant known to chase away sorrow. The plant is frequently mentioned in Greek literature, like Homer's The Odyssey, so some historians claim that it could be fictional. Others believe that it was real and widely used in ancient Greece. It was said that Nepenthe originated in Egypt, and its effects have led many to compare it to opium or laudanum as a drug of forgetfulness. It's possible that this plant is still around today, but modern science hasn't identified its modern equivalent, so for now it remains a mystery. Roman concrete. Why is it that our modern concrete falls apart within a century? 
but Roman concrete has stood over a millennium. The biggest difference is with the chemical composition. Roman concrete contained high levels of volcanic rock and lime, and when seawater was introduced, it would cause a reaction between the ingredients and form an incredibly strong bond. Our modern Portland cement does not contain this mixture and has a service life of about 50 years quite often less if exposed to seawater. To add to injury, it appears as though the Roman method for making concrete is far more environmentally sustainable and would release less carbon dioxide into the air annually. Starlight Egg Invented in 1986 by Maurice Ward, Starlight was a special plastic that could withstand over 10,000 degrees Celsius and would not release toxic gases or smoke. While the exact formula was taken to his grave, this substance was based on a combination of approximately 21 polymers and copolymers with added ceramics. Allegedly, its strength and durability also increased when under stress. This substance appeared in BBC's Tomorrow's World in 1990, where an egg was coated in the substance and blasted with a 1,200 degrees torch. Not only did starlight protect the egg, but the internal temperature never rose about 35 degrees Celsius and the egg was still raw. Not even high-powered lasers or simulated nuclear flashes could destroy the material. And very quickly, the inventor had investors calling him to try to capitalize on his invention. Worried that this material would end up in the wrong hands, Mr. Ward was adamant that he would maintain a 51% control of the projects and wanted to make sure that no one could reverse engineer Starlight. Ward passed away in 2011, with no agreements being made. Starlight may be lost to the world. However, Ward alleged that some of his immediate family knew the recipe, so there is always the chance we will see large-scale use of the material in the future. Mithridatium, named for King Mithridates Thixt, was an alleged universal antidote to all poisons. Though the exact formula has been lost to time, historians believe it included opium, chopped vipers, and small amounts of both poisons and their antidotes. The antidote was developed around 100 BC and used for many centuries, especially in Italy and France. It was even used not long ago in 19th century under the name Theriac. Today, the recipe is unknown, but there have been documented attempts to recreate the formula to this miracle antidote as recently as the 1990s. Slute Coding System In the mid to late 90s, a Dutch electronics engineer devised a data storage method that could hold a full-length film in 8 kilobytes of data. Most modern techniques still require much more data to store a regular movie, HD films even more. Despite the impossibility of this system, it quickly attracted investors and Jan Sloot, the inventor, presented his system to Roll Peeper from Philips. Later that year, Peeper left Philips to join Sloot's company. Unfortunately, just days before Sloot was to release the source code, he was found dead in his garden from an apparent heart attack. While tragic, this would not have stopped the investors from perusing the technology. There was just one small problem. A key piece of the project was housed on a floppy disk in Sloot's possession, and after his death, they were never able to recover it, despite searching for months. The Antikythera Mechanism One of the most enigmatic artifacts in history is the Antikythera Mechanism, a bronze device that was discovered by divers off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera in the early 1900s. The machine is made up of over 30 gears, cranks, and dials that could be manipulated in order to chart the astronomical positions of the sun, moon, and other planets. The device has been dated as far back as the 1st or 2nd century BC. No one knows the true purpose of this machine, but its intricate and advanced design has led to a lot of speculation over the years. Generally, historians seem to agree that the Antikythera mechanism was a kind of primitive clock that could calculate lunar phases and solar years, with many referring to it as the earliest analog computer. Wilhelm Reich's Cloudbuster in the 1950s, William Reich created a pseudoscientific device called a Cloudbuster. This device allegedly manipulated an energy called orgone energy to affect the atmosphere and change weather patterns. Allegedly, this device was used on a farm in 1953 and was proven to work when it called down rain. The orgone energy was also used to create devices for medicinal use. However, the FDA decided it served no medical purpose and more than likely provided a placebo effect after interviewing physicians for years. In March of 1954, the FDA ordered that all accumulators, parts, and instructions be destroyed, as well as several of Reich's books containing references to orgone energy being withheld. Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower, also known as the Tesla Tower, was an ambitious project by inventor Nikola Tesla 
Designed to demonstrate the potential of wireless power transmission, built in the early 20th century in Shoreham, New York, the tower was intended to transmit electrical energy without wires over long distances using the Earth's ionosphere. Tesla envisioned it as a way to provide free and unlimited energy to the world. Despite initial funding from investors like JP Morgan, the project was ultimately abandoned due to financial difficulties and skepticism from the scientific community. The tower was dismantled in 1917, 